Today, I just thought we'd take a look at this Syntec 200 amp car charger that belongs to a friend of mine at work. And we're just gonna see if we can get this thing back going. He mentioned that it was probably hooked up with the wrong polarity. So if it didn't get a circuit breaker, it probably most certainly got a diode or the whole rectifier assembly. So we're just gonna look at it and see what we find today. I won't spend a lot of time showing you getting into this. It's just sheet metal screws. Gonna fast forward through a lot of it until we can get into it and see what we can find today. There's our rectifier plate. Here's our circuit breakers, our current shunt, and our circuit breakers together. Make sure we got no bad connections here, no burnt marks on any gauges, switches. All seems to be good. There's a negative coming off the transformer. Our positive is off the plate. Let's hook it up and just see what we uh, see with it. I believe he said it was noisy and letting some smoke out of it. So let's just see. Yeah, that does not sound good. Saw a little bit of smoke from the center of the rectifier plate there. You can see that burnt mark. I'll give you a good steel shot here. You can see it better right there in the middle. At least one dough there is burned. So let's unplug and I'm just showing here that these uh, these connections do have a little clip. You gotta push in and then it slides off, off the spade terminal. I'll show more detail of this on the bench later. But we're just gonna take these spade terminals loose and get the plate off of here so we can do some uh, troubleshooting on the bench. This is taking loose the positive. There's two wires up here on the plate. Put the nut back on so we won't lose this. And we'll be careful here with these insulators as we take this plate off the laminations of the transformer. Notice here that we have an insulator and also a plastic insulator sleeve standoff because we definitely don't want this grounding out. As we mentioned, I should, that's gonna be your positive on your top is where your positive high current connection is. We'll just thread these nuts back on so we won't lose them. And let's get a closer look at this thing. Meter and diode mode and let's go across and we definitely have a short here, but if you can tell, they're all together. So let's just start taking these loose. And these little ignition pliers work great for just grabbing the tab where it locks on. Just pull it off the spade terminal. If you can get a fingernail on there, you can also grab it and pull it that way. And sometimes even a screwdriver works better if you can get it and push that up. If you can see here in this shot, and pull it off and now we're all isolated each diode's on the plate and we should be able to tell which one's shorted so that one's good definitely shorted good let's reverse polarity good shorted good and the other side here that's good going that polarity let's change it around good looking for about a half a volt good and good so we got one diode out of six and as you notice these are all cathode to the plate the way we had the negative on the plates how we know that let's drill this little stud out because there's no way to get to these diodes without drilling out the rivet and then it's got a little pin and spring I'm not sure at the moment. I don't believe these are available anymore. I think you can get some of the diodes, but instead of 3D printing some more of these uh, holders, I'm just gonna use these high current diodes. I like using these anyway, and there's a lot of options here. We can bolt on to them, we can solder to them. So let's just drill a hole in the plate in the new location and just mount these newer 50 amp diodes on there. Cause this AR50D that was on this plate, they're 50 amp rated of course. Gotta love a unit bit. Let's be bare while we drill here.
and within a matter of minutes we're mounting our new diodes again guys make sure you get the right diode for your charger this one as i showed the cathodes to the plate you can order these either way of course just do it like so make sure we hold it tighten it to the plate just remember the plates are positive so cathode only So we did have one wire burn up. I think we can save this one. It's in good shape. It was on the right hand side here. Just gonna put a ring terminal, crimp it, so we can tie it easily to the diode and it'll be easily removable later instead of soldering on a cable. I had my soldering iron on. I was almost gonna solder a lead onto here, but really no need because I'm pretty sure when we get to the transformer and mount it back in the charger, we're probably gonna have to bolt on uh, one of the leads for the transformer onto those as well because if you remember the leads tied to the lower and the middle spot on the connections just making up a new cable here right quick 14 gauge white wires what I have available here even though these are rated for like 200 amps for a small amount of time Syntec only puts looks like 14 gauge or maybe 16 gauge wire but the red wire definitely blistered up as you see in the video I'm just going to use a 632 screw here and I got plenty of room to add another ring terminal if we decide to do so later I'm going to leave these a little bit loose I can tighten down if I need to, but I don't believe the transformer is going to reach. And here's a baggie of the goodies with the, with the blistered wire and the bad diode and holder. As we go to put this in, yeah, the, the lead's definitely not going to reach, so I'm probably going to have to add some ring terminals and terminate it on the, the new diodes. Just making sure we got our insulators right and tightening up the plate. Plate secured. The bottom one slides right on on each side. And the top one, yeah, we're going to have to clip it and add a ring terminal. Just make sure you don't have any varnish on these wires when you crimp. Um, ours, the varnish was back far enough, but of course some transformer leads might have varnish on them up to the connection so be aware of that may I scrape it sand it or burn it off whichever you choose to do just tighten these ring terminals back up we'll do the same thing on the other side Here I am out of shot, but I was just putting that positive wire back on the top of the plate. And as you can see here, both sides of the transformer are connected to the diodes here. I just want to show you real quick here how the diodes were on this plate. So we had our, our six diodes and we had our plate down the middle. And this plate, of course, was positive. We had the two wires at the top bolted through. There was a white wire in, in the main red positive coming off that plate. And the cathodes of these diodes went to the plate. So all six of them were the same direction. And usually we designate what a K and an A. K for cathode and A for anode. our transformer was coming off with a shorter lead and a little bit longer lead on each side and of course our shorter lead went to the bottom anode and the middle anode and the same thing with the left side so both sides did the same thing and of course all of our anodes were connected from one way or another um, the red wire originally was jumped to all three and we have it that way now as well but that's how it was and we had to separate those out while we was trying to find our short 
at the bottom here, I'm just showing you want to keep that insulator in place. You don't want that to ground out. Just making a mention of that. But as we took those leads loose, we could tell that that dough there was the one that was shorted. So we went ahead and replaced both of those in the middle with this type here, as we see in the picture here. So I've got my leads hooked up here. Let's, let's do a test. 12 volts, 40 amps. Yep. Go to our 200 amp start. Yep, go 18 volts, cool. Off. Six volt. The two amp at 12 volts. It's low and then goes on up at 12 volts, 10 amps, and then to our 40. So for a true test here, I got a 12 volt battery hooked up. The 12 volt battery is really fully charged at 12.8 volts. But we're gonna see where it hooked up and just going to our two amp 12 volt selector. If it'll charge, put out more voltage. And absolutely perfect. If we wanted to give it a 10 amp boost, even more. I like it. So I hope you found this video helpful today. As always, I'll have some links in the description of the video down below of some tools and interesting items that I like to use on my workbench and any of those items that you find helpful are affiliate links and to help support the channel. Any link you click on, I greatly appreciate. But thanks for all your support. Thanks for watching today and God bless.